have you on the air with us tonight. How you doing, sir? I'm doing exceptionally well, Ken. <laughs> and I want to welcome everyone to this smooth segment of the Exceptional Conservative Show, live on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Live it is, man. And this is definitely the most smooth period of conversation and talk. We go deep and define ourselves materialistically, spiritually, and as well, metaphysically. We break it down so that you have a better understanding of just who we be in time and space. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Milner with us tonight. I want to catch up on some stuff with you, Dave. Dave, man, uh, I was talking earlier with this guy named Michael Brown who tiptoed in here, the little Marxist leprechaun kind of guy. And he was telling me that jive that he was laying down was really solid, right? He was telling me, brother, that somehow Joe Biden was going to win the election. I got to get you to say yay and amen or really break down the funk for us to get a better understanding. <laughs> well, there was plenty of funk, but it wasn't the kind we like. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have their own, these people on the left have their own, um, I won't say methods, but beliefs, um, religiously speaking, um, nothing to do with actual religion. It's more the religion of the poll and the MSNBC and the CNN and all of that mess. Uh, he can believe the way he wants to, certainly the polls. Are, uh, are backing him up in some senses. But I, I, let me just give you a little prediction as to what I, how I think the polls are going to work out. They're going uh, to widen out a bit right now and uh, put Trump in the lead. And then a day or two before the election, they're going to flip and you're going to see you know big, big numbers for Biden and, oh, Trump is in trouble and all this kind of stuff. We keep, we've been seeing this kid for like about a week and a half, two weeks, the polls are not making sense based on things that we're hearing in the communities, all the communities, uh, things that we're seeing in the sports world, all sorts of things. These polls are making no sense. And if Michael Brown or anybody else is going by the polls for this, I think that they might just as well, um, you know, uh, check out uh, how, uh, how Comic-Con thinks uh, the presidential election is going to turn out because it's pure fantasy. Definitely fantasy. Uh, I have been told to cut it out. My Mary Brockman, my bouncer in chief, so I will cut it out now, and I'll go back to my regular voice. Dave Milner with us tonight, ladies and gentlemen, live from the nation's capital as we're talking about issues and or problems going around the world. Uh, listen, we were talking offline there, uh, and you had some breaking news that you wanted to project to the world. Tell us what that breaking news is. All right. Well, it appears now. I don't have the article in front of me, but I had to. I had to actually interrupt Jeff's um, closing for EDL Radio to say this: that Mr. Scully, the one who was um, supposed to um, handle the uh, next uh, Trump Biden debate, uh, and who claimed that his Twitter account was hacked, well, it turns out he lied, and he has been suspended indefinitely from C-SPAN. That, that's farm fresh today. So that's one bit of news. This is um, this has been a rather, um, shall we put it, full news day. It is. Um, I don't blame anyone for not being able to catch some of the wild and crazy stuff that has been out. You have given me, as you do, as you do, <laughs> uh, several topics to look at, and uh, and one of. This is one that will lead into one of these topics if you want to go there now. Yeah. Uh, th this is off of a story that I found in Breitbart. The UK is still going insane in the membrane with all of these, um, lot these regional lockdowns. It's kind of like our state lockdowns in a way. Um, and Boris Johnson's own party is beginning to rebel against all this mess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just insane. They want to keep people indoors. I mean, we're talking about uh, about uh, March-style lockdowns here in the United States equivalent here, okay? And shut down businesses and everything. That has a cost, okay? And uh, if you want to find out about that, go to uh, go to Breitbart and look for uh, Breitbart London and look for cost of lockdown. Um, 
see, heart charity claims, all right, hundreds of, quote, excess deaths, unquote, due to lockdown. I just want to read you one paragraph out of this story that will blow minds, okay? Yeah. Now, this is, this is out of the UK, all right? <clears throat> the British Heart Foundation has said that delays in care caused by the coronavirus uh, lockdown resulted in more than 800, quote, excess, end quote, deaths of under 65s uh, by conditions like strokes, uh, cardiac arrests. That's the first paragraph of that. And I want people in the States to think about this here, okay? Uh, imagine, now, those numbers are probably low. Okay, because, of course, all this stuff goes through the Brit government and they don't want to panic people. That, But that number is probably low. And if you think about that, and then if you project that to the United States and how low they're likely to project the numbers for those things in the States, that is enough to make you want to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And that, in piggyback, and I put this news story in the chat room for people to follow along at home. Uh, France, the Parisians, are upset uh, with um, Macron, Macron, uh, and the French State Health Department as they are planning additional lockdowns uh, and restrictions because of the increased number of cases. Now, I, I got to ask you, when did we switch from worrying about deaths to worrying about cases? No one on the left can tell me when that happened. But, I mean, we were watching deaths fall, the number of fall uh, over time. Uh, and all of a sudden, now they have this religion of the mask. And now they, they say that you got to lock everything down and stay in your homes and not breathe. What is that all about, Dave? I think it's about... Um, governments all over the world, and this includes Democrat and Rhino Republican governments here in the states, not being able at this stage to admit that they were wrong about this whole Wuhan virus uh, situation. It's it's a bad flu. We all suspected it's been a bad flu for about six months, all of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and it's turned out that that's exactly what it is. The deaths are way down. I think I heard one figure, um, worldwide deaths from the Wuhan, uh, from the Wuhan, you know, I'm talking about deaths of Wuhan, the, mm -hmm. the virus itself, are at 0.23%. That's a tiny, tiny number. But the governments don't want to admit that all of this hell that they put people through and all of these deaths that they know they're going to cause, because it's going to be a ripple effect of deaths yeah. for likely years, okay? They don't want to admit that all of that was done in error. So they're they're doubling down on all of this stuff. Yes, I've been following the stories about France for a couple of days now. And they're looking to lock down a, a lot of, if not all, of their um, metropolitan areas over there. And I've already, of course, told you about the UK. Yeah. Uh, the, um, the state of Victoria in Australia is doing... The same thing still, they're, they're still doubling down on this, even though, you rightly point out, the death rate is way, way low on this. And no, it's not a second wave or anything. Of course there are more cases because more people get tested. It is insanity and the leftist governments and rhino Republicans and, and even politicians on the right who are just plain scared uh, back in February and March, particularly in March, have reached a point now where they feel they can't stop this um, this behemoth of Wuhan virus fear that they have created. It is absolutely terrible and ever encroaching the belief that people have in government and not God. And the reason why I raise that issue with you. Uh, is as we speak this day, and I know that you're planning this broadcast shortly before Thanksgiving, uh, Dr. Fauci is saying to uh, Americans uh, to act regular, uh, to be normal during Thanksgiving. Don't go out of the, your norm 
um, in this particular regard. And I think it's a sensible response to something that it, it's kind of like people already know uh, that the gig that the gig is up or the jig is up or however way they wish to say it. Uh, and people know just by looking at the stats that there is no doggone way that we should be so focused, so fixed on coronavirus based on the numbers that are coming out. I was reading something earlier this week that basically said if coronavirus was as deadly uh, as people have made it out to be in terms of the narrative from the left, which basically uh, they were only doing what a certain commentator told them to do, shut down the economy, that's how you beat Donald Trump. Uh, literally, there would be over 100 million people, in comparison to the Spanish flu, there would be over 100 million people around the world with cases in multi tens of millions of deaths. We're not dealing with that right here. So the answer of a mandate federally, and I broke this, I, I broached this with Michael Brown earlier, uh, when you say mandate, you basically eliminating the Bill of Rights. Am I correct? Well, you are as far as I'm concerned, yes. These um, edicts, and it's kind of funny because in my neighborhood, we have, we have two stores, okay, two little convenience stores. One's more a small grocery store. Mm -hmm. Now, in one of them, I've stopped going in because they say, well, it's a law. Everybody has to wear a mask that comes in here. I, now, in the other one, I go in, you know, we talk sports, we mm -hmm. mess around a little bit get my stuff and that place is packed it's just as if it was january or early february before any of this mess began yes the, the guys behind the counters are wearing masks and almost no one else is there are a few old people in my neighborhood in the old north end of burlington vermont who are wearing masks and that's cool that's cool that's how it should have been right from the start okay uh if you want to quarantine somebody quarantine the vulnerable okay that's fine um but everybody else is acting differently, and you can you can really feel the oppression when it comes to doing certain things. I'm, I made an, an eye appointment, and that's going to be for the 18th of November because I wanted to get that done after the election. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's going to be very interesting to see. This is going to be a Fletcher Allen Hospital in in Burlington. And I asked the guy, okay, you know, I got, I got to wear a space suit, you know, what, what's going on? And he said, oh, yeah, you know, your temperature will be taken and, you know, you'll be asked if you have any symptoms and all that. And, yes, you do have to wear a mask and blah, 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 blah. It's going to be fascinating to see how, uh, how the, uh, you know, hysteria central for Burlington, how they handle it after the election versus how they're handling it now before the election. Uh, you know, it's going to be very fascinating to see, especially when, and I suspect this is true of a lot of neighborhoods, okay, when in my neighborhood, except for a few holdouts, yeah, there are people that are either ignoring the edicts or they are skirting around the edicts, and people are freedom-minded. They're sick of this nonsense, and they want it to end, and I think I can give you an idea, Ken, of when it will end, depending a lot on how the election turns out, if you yeah. want that. Uh, I, I do. I do indeed. Go right ahead. All right. Trump wins. You're still going to see rhino Republicans and especially Democrat governors uh, keeping up with the lockdowns and the mask hysteria and all that stuff probably up until the summer of, of, uh, of 2021. Mm -hmm. If not beyond, they're, they're going to want to punish the people by doing that. Now, if Biden wins, what I think you'll see uh, now, there are a lot of people saying, well, the lockdown stuff will end immediately. No, I don't agree with that because they have to, again, to create some verisimilitude for themselves, even though they they were wrong and they know it. So what will happen will be that they will keep the, lock, the lockdown slash mask thing going through Thanksgiving, they'll keep it going through Christmas because, of course, they want to deny us Christmas, and they'll keep it going right up until the week of February the 14th, and that's when you'll begin to see an easing of everything. 
uh, that that is my prediction. We'll see if we're right or wrong. I think it's a wonderful prediction because I, I will assure you in terms of breaking this down, and I'm so glad that Dave Milner is with us tonight um, because it, you need clarity in terms of the possibilities statistically of what's going to happen. If Donald Trump wins and he gains the House, you will see a stimulus bill before Christmas. It's, it will happen. Um, at that point, Nancy Pelosi would have to cower. Uh, she would be planning for the next two years and trying to win back the House. If everything stays the same, Donald Trump wins the presidency, the Senate is controlled by the Republicans, uh, and Nancy Pelosi remains Speaker of the House, you are not going to see a stimulus bill until sometime in February or March of 2021. It just won't happen. They are that far apart from one another. Uh, and then finally, if Joe Biden wins, uh, I don't know if you will see a stimulus at all from Joe Biden because his legislative agenda will be more along the lines of increasing taxes, increasing as much spending as possible uh, out of the uh, federal government. Uh, so we are in a situation where the best scenario for Americans that want a stimulus for targeted industries like the airplanes, uh, like the shipping, uh, like uh, other tourists and hotels and things of that nature. If you want to see success, uh, then gosh darn it, you vote for Donald Trump and allow Donald Trump to have a red wave that takes back the House, controls the Senate. That's the best option for you at all. Uh, I want to broach something with you uh, since we're on the issue of the Senate. You know, Lindsey Graham came out a few weeks ago and started begging Americans for support, even though he's not done anything out of the Judiciary Committee to deal with Hillary Rodham Clinton, Barack Hussein Obama, or uh, Joe Biden, Joseph Ro Robinette Biden, that is. Um, we have a black senator from South Carolina. He is a conservative Republican. His name is Tim Scott. Crime bill was rejected that he offered uh, to the Democrat Marxists because it wasn't going to lock up enough black people. That's my opinion. Uh, so they have one. But they have a new guy named Jamie Harrison. And he has taken a narrow lead in a new one poll. Another poll shows that Lindsey Graham is further ahead than Jamie Harrison. But the Democrats have sent in the last quarter, bear with me here, $57 million to this one guy so that they could take Lindsey Graham's spot, who is virtually the uh, heir apparent uh, to becoming the majority leader uh, should anything happen to Mitch McConnell. I want to get your thoughts uh, regarding Jamie Harrison, the Democrat Marxist from South Carolina, and why are the Democrats trying so hard to get rid of Lindsey Graham? Well, they could be smelling blood in the water. They could think that he's vulnerable and that it's actually worth it to him to expend that kind of money to get rid of him. That's, that's definitely a possibility in that you're seeing these Soros-like techniques being applied to the Senate, which which is nothing new. I mean, they're being applied to the House as it is anyway, and, uh, and to local races. Guys uh, watching and listening, uh, make no mistake about that. Uh, but that could well be, and plus which the Democrats think they might be able to turn the Senate their way. And if they get the Senate and the White House, that could, that could wind up being a disaster for the entire country. Um, and, and, you know, but I, I really like your analysis concerning the House because there are going to be some, some uh, lower, um, there are going to be some uh, lowercase offices that are going to switch because of this Wuhan virus thing. I think, is there a chance that the Republicans could gain majority in the House? I think there is an outside chance that that could happen. And it's a good thing if that does happen, because I was having this conversation with Jeff Mitchell today on EDL Radio mm -hmm. and, with the, and with the underground professor who was with us. And I said there that Nancy Pelosi is the most dangerous individual 
in American politics. If she retains her majority in the House, she has friends in the uh, the shadow government, in the FBI, uh, the uh, State Department, and other uh, executive branch areas. Okay, she has friends there. She can virtually run the country from the speaker's seat. And I will tell you that the only people more frightening than Nancy Pelosi right now are the people who pull her strings. Yep, they do indeed. Want to talk with you real quick about emails. No, not Hillary's. Hunter Biden's emails. Um, and Joe Biden's emails that are just beginning to dash out of the pages of the New York Post, for which yours truly has been banned by Twitter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Two shows a night. Uh, and as well, uh, the whole idea that Joe Biden used his son to peddle influence in exchange for $30 million from a Chinese entity. Uh Got to get your thoughts here. Are we talking right now that in the next, by next week when we talk again, that Joe Biden's presidency run will come to a swift end? What say you, sir? I don't know that that's going to occur because the left is going to do everything they can to suppress the information about the email <laughs> 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 oh, Wait, wait, wait. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. I don't know what that was. <laughs> the left is going to do everything they can to suppress this information. So a lot of people aren't even going to get it. I mean, another radio show uh, ran a little video uh, of some Trump uh, supporters talking to a Biden supporter, a black Biden supporter, who had not even heard the now famous quote from Joe Biden that, um, you know, if, you, um, if you're voting for Donald Trump, you ain't black. I mean, he hadn't even heard it. And this, this quote has been around for months now. And they played it for him, uh, for him on uh, their phone and all that. But the point is, the left's, uh, the left's usage of social media and, of course, the legacy media, which the, um, at the Google and the Facebook and the Twitter and the Instagram and, and uh, YouTube are all part of that. Their usage of that is going to be now to throttle down any news that might be a quote-unquote October surprise for the Joe Biden campaign. So I'm not sure how much of an impact this will have, although it may have more of an impact than some people think, because I, it is my belief now that more and more people are beginning to see that all the legacy media that I just mentioned is not giving them the whole truth, not giving them the whole news. And they're coming to places like TECN to get the real stuff. So will will it will it make a turn will it make for a turnaround? I doubt it. But will it uh, make for some significant thoughts on the part of potential voters? I think so. I want to say this with Dave and love you, man. Thank you for so much for coming on tonight. Uh, and you can hear Dave on Blog God Talk Radio you, on Thursdays and Sundays at three thirty p.m. with Jeff Mitchell, English Defense League, and the Unpleasant Blind Guy on shrmedia.com. Because uh, we got to get ready to go on to SHR Media in just a few seconds. But I want to say this to you who are following along at home. If you're listening to a conservative who has not been hostily and rudely and denigratingly treated by Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or any of the uh, leftist social media, if you are listening to them, they're not really conservative. They're not a threat. Only those who have already been challenged by Facebook and by Twitter and by Instagram are your real conservatives. Uh, Welcome so, to the club, kid. Th there you go. That, you're real conservatives. This is how you know that you're listening to the right program or you're watching the right program. Uh, Alex Jones is not a figment of our imagination. It's going to happen to you if you're a real conservative uh, or an amazingly radical libertarian. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank y'all so much for tuning in. Mary Brockman, mm, switches gracias, thank you so much. Uh, and as well, Bonnie Williams, love you dearly, mm, switches gracias, thank you so much. Uh, and as well, Mrs. Biggs, thank you so much for all your financial support for making the dream come true. Switches gracias to you. Dave Milner, love you, man. I want to tell you, uh, if you, as we cut the camera too, don't find me. I said it, cut the camera too. 
with this great flag behind us and knowing the message behind the Pledge of Allegiance that we are one nation under God, I want you always to remember this. God bless America. It's time for America to bless God. Good night. The Exceptional Conservative Show is over. We'll be back in a few moments with none other than BZ, Sir Mark the Bloviating Zeppelin, on his wonderful program, Berserk Bobcat Saloon. Good night and God bless you all. Thank you.